Now we'll start with something. Um, whoops, there. We'll start with a very simple uh, program that at least introduces first of us a new library, and second of all, a library that is not a standard library. So as you can see here, we have one single inclu included library here, which is called ncurses, and this ncurses allows us to put characters anywhere on the screen. The screen, however, here in this case, and this is also very important, is, some, is something here on the terminal. So let's make this a bit bigger. So this is one screen, that's our terminal, you know, because if we do clear here, for instance, in our operating system, only this part is cleared. And also in this case, we always have to go to the right directory as well, on both sides, right? This is not one program, this is two consoles, and they're next to each other nicely ordered so that you can for instance, compile on one side and write on the other side, but you could also start a nano here, for instance, of worlds, and do two times the same thing. That's also a possibility, what you could do. So these are just two consoles next to each other. Um, and what ncurses allows you to do is put a character randomly here somewhere on the console. So let's see what this program, this very little program, is going to do. There's from the library, you'll have a lot of functions that are being called. The first is called init screen, and this initializes the ncurses window. It initializes the screen somehow, probably um, creates some variables, and will allow those variables to be taking um, some values. Then there is uh, another function which, because it was nicely commented here, we know is hiding the blinking cursor, otherwise you would never know what this function would do. And then we have a portion over here, um, which empties the screen. Um, that's also what, something we know, because uh, that's the way it uh, was commented. But we see also there that certain things appear. First of all, the for loop we haven't seen yet. You just have to trust me. These are two for loops that are nested, where a variable i and a variable j are initialized to zero, first of all. And in the first loop, i goes from zero to lines. We don't know what lines really means, but I assume it's the number of lines in our window. Um, and then j goes from 0 to columns. And columns, I assume, is the number of columns in our window in terms of characters. And these are nested. So in the first loop, we do i is 0. And then when i is 0, j goes from 0 to columns. Then i becomes 1 in the next iteration, and then j goes again from 0 to columns, and so on and so on. So that way we can have all the lines and all the columns, and something happens with those. Or all the characters on the window, let's put it that way. And what, we're, uh, what happens then is that a certain function, mv add ch, um, so add character is basically what this function stands for, which draws a character. We've seen if the single quotes, uh, you can have one character in between there, and this character is here, the empty space. So it will draw at uh, position i, y, the empty character. And since i, y goes everywhere over the screen, we basically have um, every character on the screen being emptied. Okay? This will come later. Actually, what we can do in a second is put this into a function, because this is something that we'll probably do uh, more and more, and it will at least show you how functions uh, are useful. Now, once the screen is completely empty, was there a question? Yes, so basically all these functions we can use just because we have this uncursed library out. And there's nothing else included, right? Also, IOStream, our favorite library so far, has not been included here at all. We just use ncurses here. So all the functions that you will get here are functions that must come from this library. Right, so basically what we do then, so we have emptied our, our screen, then we draw a question mark right in the middle of our screen. And also here you can see that lines and calls are particular variables, or, or some values at least, which show you how many characters there are uh, in terms of height of our window, that's the number of lines our window is long, and the columns, so the width of our window. We divide those two by, z by two, and hope, by the way, here that those are integers. Because if those are integers, we don't have to worry that this function might have some problem with uh, floating points. You know, what if you add a character at position 
15.5, uh, 17.7. You know, all of these things would be uh, problematic here. So hopefully this would be integers. In that case, we don't have to worry about this at all anyway. Was there a question in the back? Did you have a question? Sorry? Is an old number? Odd number. Well, in that case, well, as we saw, so the integer division is basically normal division and everything else is basically uh, thrown away, right? So, yes, you lose precision there for sure as well, yes. And it will, um, I mean, this is exactly the same function as we had before. Instead of, however, an empty space, we draw here the question mark character, right? We could also draw any other character here. And then, and the reason for uh, having this over here is because... If we didn't have this, we would do end win, which would close the terminal window that we would have at that time, and end the program. In that case, we would not see that much. So it would open a window in our terminal, create it, initialize it over here. Um, it would do some other things. It would empty that screen, draw this, but then immediately return back. And you would have to not flinch if you would have to if we wanted to see that that question mark. So what we'll do here is we, we do and ask the user to do something, and until that user does a particular thing, we keep on, or we, we stay here. We go through this while loop, that's also something we will soon see. A while loop is basically something that keeps on doing whatever is between the compound brackets here, until a certain condition is met. In this case, until the C is not equal to the character Q. And we know that C is a character, and it was initialized as a zero, so it's definitely not Q in the beginning. So C is not equal to Q, to the character Q, so it will then ask for a character from the user. And as long as the user does not press a Q, it will stay in this loop, and therefore we can see this question mark over here. right? Once the, the user presses Q, it will go out of this while loop, goes to end win, it closes the window, and it returns our function. Okay, so th that's, I hope, something that will work. Um, the, the, the thing here that will happen is, okay, I will compile it first. Let's do it like this again. If we do this, something is going to happen. Anyone knows what is going to happen? Screen pops up. So, cursor uh, disappear and then in the middle, question mark. You're very optimistic. <laughs> Too optimistic. First of all, we're just compiling. We're not executing. Okay. Second of all, we're using a library, and that's something that you didn't know, of course, but we're using a library and curses, which is not a standard library. It's not standard by standard included in our C environments. And what happens then is our compiler will look all at all of those functions and will say, huh? Like this. Huh? All of those functions are unknown, you know, this, um, so exactly. So these functions are unknown to the compiler environment. It tries to link those functions to something with real content, but doesn't find those. And that's why we have to add here at the end with the minus L commands, our library. And our library is called ncurses, as you can see. Uh, the dot .h goes away because dot .h means that it's a header file that was included, but the library is called ncurses, and if we do that, it'll work, right? In that case, at least we have compiled an executable. Now, let's see if that executable, which is uh, w1, that's our program, if that works. Yes. So, basically, now the screen is cleared, and in the middle, we have a question mark. Yeah, right? should, should we do the same for every uh, library or only for this one? For every library that is not a standard library, we have to link it in. Yes. And of course, there are hundreds of libraries, right? So this is the reason why C and C++ cannot foresee uh, everything that you would like to do. So there are always libraries that also you can build yourself. But in that case, they will always have to be linked in. Later, we'll see more about this. For now, we will use a simple library that you can in the comment line, just link in like that, so that our compiler and linker in the end will know where those functions are and what the definition of those functions are, right? And of course, this can be any type of libraries. We could have very spectacular libraries with 3D graphics, movies, and everything else. But we'll keep things simple in this course. Therefore, we'll just use the screen with, you know, about 
15 characters wide and, 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 and 25 characters uh, uh, long, for instance. Right? That, that's that's the, the idea here. Good, so <clears throat> what we can do is, of course, I mean, for those that don't, I mean, we can also do other things. We can draw somewhere else our, so we can draw at a quarter, and we can draw something completely else, like a big T, for instance. Oops, save, not cancel, okay. We do that again, and if we execute again, we have our T at a quarter of the screen, right? So just to give you an example, I can now type lots of things. Oh, they're appearing even. Interesting. Um, but um, what, what also happens is that if I press a Q, it will exit, right? That's the idea. Okay. Everybody gets that? No questions anymore about this? I mean, this is just a one-screen example. I think that is simple, simple enough to start with. Okay, now, as I promised, first, what we're going to do is we're going to introduce a function that does the emptying of the screen on its own, because we don't need that. I mean, basically, all of what is happening here, we can easily just get rid of and encapsulate in its own function. And what we're going to do first is we're going to remove that, so we cut all of that out. And we're going to paste it right here. Now, if we're going to make a function that empties the screen, would we need a return value? We could if there was a certain error, right? However, for this particular example, I'm just going to be bold and say we're not going to generate errors in this particular piece of code. And let's just say that this, return fu this function doesn't return anything. Also, that is possible in C and C++. And in that case, instead of saying int or float or double or car or bool, uh, we're going to say void. Void is nothingness in English. So nothing will be returned. Now then, the next thing we'll do is going to name our function. I would say clear, clear screen is a nice function. Let's do it like this. Does it need any, any parameters? That's something also that will come later. Do, do we need to give it any parameters that the screen is cleared some more, some way else? Not really, right? Lines, this is something that is given already by incursus. Uh, but you're right. It 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 might it might give a problem. Actually, we'll we'll find that out later. We'll see. So basically, this I would say is a good encapsulation of a very simplistic function. If we want to do exactly the same as we did before. We can call this function like this, clear screen, and that should be it. So now we call that function and hope that the screen is cleared. Now, will this work because of the lines and columns? We'll see. Yes, is the answer. Um, the reason why is that these lines and columns, as soon as this library is introduced, are available, just like all those other functions. The question, however, is a very good one, because maybe those lines and columns would be initialized over here, and in that case, you know, having this function with different lines and columns could become problematic somewhere else. This is something we're going to ignore for now, but uh, as, uh, as we go on, it would indeed be sometimes very wise to put everything that is somehow variable, and also lines and columns are somehow variable, perhaps, you know, if we resize our screen, also those things will vary, right? How are we going to deal with that? So in that case, the screen, the clear screen might have these lines and columns indeed as, as parameters. But let's not do that now. So if we now go and look at the main function, it is a lot shorter and it's easier to read. I would even say that we don't need to say what clear screen does. I think that is a good enough named function uh, for now as well. You don't have to comment everything if it's clear what is going to happen. Like in this case, you don't need to co uh, provide comments. Now, the next thing what we are going to do, or what, what I want to do, is I want to have a warm on the screen that we can drive somehow with our keyboard. Uh, I think um, that would be quite nice, right? And in that case, what we have to do, first of all, is we have to indeed, um, instead of having this drawing of a question mark in the middle of the screen, we'll probably have to do something completely different. We'll have to draw, first of all, something in the screen that we can control um, and that we can keep on resizing. Or, no, not resizing, uh, we can, uh, that comes later. We'll have to keep on 
moving it across the screen. And for moving things across the screen, I would say we need variables. Anyone with me? Yes? So basically what, what we need as variables, I would say, are... Any suggestions? Four variables up, down, left, right. That is one way. There is, however, one simpler way. Yes, screen coordinates. So basically, we can just say the X and Y position, for instance, of our worm, or of the head of our worm, if you can think of it. Yeah, well, whatever. Yes. So basically, this is the start of our worm. It should be at an X and Y coordinate somewhere on the screen. I mean, let's start with a worm that is very trivial, namely a worm of size uh, 1, <laughs> or, or, or of length 1. Um, and so in that case, we'd need a worm that is somehow somewhere on the screen. And to define where on the screen, we can do this with coordinates. For instance, I mean, let's call this just x and y, right? And let's also um, initialize them properly. So we have x and y first as 0. So it will start at the top left, I believe, I hope. That is, uh, I think, the coordinate 0, 0. Um, and then we should be able to drive that worm somewhere, right? So we could give our worm a, a face or, like, let's give it a big O, right? And in this case, we plot it or we draw it at um, uh, where we where we wanted it to have. Draw our mini worm. There we go. And let's see what, ha what, what happens then. So I assume it will be, a big O will be plotted at uh, position 0, 0. So we compile, we execute, and indeed, that, there is our big worm. We still can't move it, however, but, you know, at least our assumptions about 0, 0 being the top left were right. Of course, I knew this because I've been doing this for a while. Um, but, I mean, if you know, don't know this, you can just try this out, of course. Next, what are we going to do next? First of all, it's clear that we need a type of uh, continuous loop where the user can constantly press keys. And depending on which keys are pressed, this worm is going to move left, right, up, or down, right? So when we do this, we basically want... Um, after initialization, so this is, these are the initialization, is it initialization things, we want a while loop, I would say. Um, let's put this character right at the top. So what we always want is user input. In this case, we're just going to say uh, character um, pressed by user. Right, so the variable C will hold the character that the user presses on their keyboard. And then in this while loop, I'm going to say exactly the same. As long as C is not um, uh, the character Q, then I'm going to do quite a bit, in fact. Um, first of all, I can actually clear the screen and draw our mini worm at all times. Right? I think that would be a good start. Um, and we will need to read the user's, the user's key that he pressed or she pressed as well. This we can get rid of. So our program is still fairly manageable. So we have now an endless loop uh, or a loop here, which while does. And in this loop, we constantly first clear the screen and then draw our worm, right? And then we ask the user for input, and then we have to do something. And the thing we have to do is basically change the worm's position. So, and I would say we do this over here, straight after we gotten the, the user's input, and that we can do with something that we'll see today, which is the if clause. So basically, if is basically something that is constantly followed, or always be followed with brackets, and at best, something with uh, a compound statement. So basically, multiple statements could be then used. And there we can do tests. And this is basically, if the user presses a particular key, we're going to act on that. So the first thing that we can test is, what is C? And um, one, I, one example is over here. This is an example. C is not the same, or is not equal to the character Q. 
we can do exactly the same with is equal and there we'll use two equal signs for is equal. One equal sign is assignment. That means C becomes the value of whatever comes after. We've seen that last week. Two equal signs is a test. Is the value of our character C equal to a particular character, right? And this character, in this case, we can choose it. Um, what shall we use? I would say, okay, let's first start with the, the character for right. Move right. And we're going to do the typical old-fashioned gamers comment, which is D. So we have A, S, D, and W, W and S go up and down. A and D is left and right, right? Or anyone else for the suggestion? Because in that case, you can have one hand for all the keys and you're ultra fast in moving that worm. Aha, an excellent uh, question. The problem is here, we're very limited. We want a character to be put in by the user. Now, what is the character of an arrow key? There is one, or there are several actually, but there's not one character that we can assume here to have an arrow key likeness. So if we press the arrow key, um, something might happen, but it's not going to be uh, it's not going to happen what we think is going to happen. So it's not the user is not supplying one character. That is the first uh, thing that is going to be happening. And we don't know what, what character, right? That's another thing. But it's a good, a very good question. Right, so if the user presses D, however, we know that the D is something that we can deal with, a character. I mean, this is part, it could be part of a string, but in this case, it's just a key that has been pressed, right? Um, and in what has been pressed, we have to do something. So move right, what do we do then? Yes, so basically we have our X. Um, and we basically increment it, as you said, is we know also that from, I mean, we could just do x bec uh, becomes the value of old value x plus 1, right? That is the lengthy part. All of this in C and C++ can be shortened by this, right? That's, so x is incremented. Um, but this is just for moving right. Will this work already? Let's test this, first of all. So we compile, that works, we move, and now if I press D, oh, okay, <laughs> it moves down, <laughs> okay, so it's Y, so the Y, Why not exactly, so, so, um, so, I mean, what are we going to do now? I mean, I'm, I'm completely open to this. Either we say X is moving left and right, and Y is moving up and down. Yeah, because uh, X, uh, this line is not common. Right. I mean, this is something we don't know because we didn't look at the comment or the definition of this particular function. Because this particular function writes first the line, yeah. then the column, right? Mm -hmm. So I think the, the nicest way would be to do this. So our X and Y are still correct, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, good. So we're assuming that is going to work. Now we can move right. So let's move left now. And exactly that way, so by pressing A, we can move left. Oops. And in this case, move left is exactly the same, X minus minus, right? So we de decrease um, or decrement X. Move left. Now, all of this we can do, let's just copy-paste, boom. All of this we can do for moving up and down as well. So, moving up, let's just go for the comments first. Moving up means, or I was hoping to do W. Moving down, I was hoping to move with the S, right? Um, and in that case, moving up, what is happening then? Plus plus, I I would say so too. Of y right, and moving down is exactly we increment y. Should we check if the other one is zero? Yes. So if we go left, it does make sense. Should we make double check? Excellent remark. We'll see what happens first of all. We'll see, we'll see what happens. So basically, if we, we compile this and we don't check, I mean, this is an excellent valid remark. 
we assume that here x and y are positive, like or that they're between zero and lines and zero and columns at all times. If this doesn't happen, I think all of you know what, what is going to happen. Because what are x and y really? They're signed integers, right? We declare them as integers that can become negative. So if we then if we here go right and down, our war moves down, up as well. But as soon as we up, move up here, it disappears. It went to um, line minus one. And I move it again, like line minus two, mi minus three, etc. Now I move down, minus two, move down, minus one, and now I'm here. Now this is a very nice uh, library that deals with these type of things. It deals with the fact that we can actually print something in a negative part of the screen. Some libraries might actually have here big errors or throw gigantic errors where a whole computer or the whole uh, operating system might crash. So it's, in this case, indeed, I'll just quit here, uh, very important that we always check here uh, whether our X and Y are perfectly aligned. So basically, uh, we could or we should actually do some tests here and also that we should do with an if. So if X is bigger than zero, I would say, right? This is also something you haven't seen yet. I'm just going to use it as such. But then we also no need to make sure that um, we can deal with the fact that x is still smaller than, what is x in this case, columns or lines? Well, lines. x is columns, no? Lines. No, x is columns. Look. So basically, x is columns. X is columns, right? Left and right. So basically, calls should should never be reached. So, and then we'll see the next thing that we're going to see today. And x is going needs to be smaller or equal, no, smaller than calls minus one. I would say because um, if it is smaller than calls. Um, it will reach calls if we increment in that case. But we need to say x um, greater than or equal to zero because if it isn't zero, it won't move, right? If it isn't, if it isn't zero, it won't. Oh, wait, we're, we're increasing here exactly. Actually, but increasing, we don't have to do this at all, right? Yes. 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 Exactly. I, I wanted to show you the, the inclusion of multiple tests, but I think we can just do it like this. Now, you could do this as well. If the thing is very simple, you could just say, if this, then x++, plus plus, and that's it. However, here, this compound statement is becoming really worthwhile our efforts now, because um, everything that happens when the character is a D will be uh, encapsulated here, and here we do this right now. Later, this might become a, a problem, so, right? So that's what we tested now. If we do, um, if we go to the left, we have to always make sure that x is always bigger than zero, right? And the same for y. If y, or if we're going to move up, then y needs to be bigger than zero as well, right? And if we're going to move down, then y needs to be smaller than, oops, yes, lines minus one. Okay, makes sense? Okay, now let's see, also there, I, I, I like to test things before I start making gigantic mistakes. So we move down and up, perfect. And if I move up here or left here, I can't move away. The same probably, hopefully, for at the end of the screen. So here I can't move away anymore. So our, our Little baby worm is now stuck in the window and can't leave the window, which is great. Okay. Now, one thing that we can actually do, which is a little trick here in this case, is make our mini worm not so mini and give it a little bit of a body because it looks a little bit silly with just one segment. Uh, what you can do is we drew, I mean, what we have here in our while loop is first we clear the screen, then we draw our mini worm. Um, and then we ask for user inputs. Once we ask our user inputs, we can draw our mini worm again at a new, and then we basically have something that was linked to um, 
let's see let's see what we can do here so now we basically do exactly the same and do it like this now this is not going to work of course because um, we we type some user inputs and then and then do and then clear the screen immediately so we have to do the clear the, the screen clearing somewhere else I would say um, or no first we basically draw this then we draw that but then the screen the, 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 the screen is cleared so how do we do that let's see I thought I had a great idea I'm not entirely sure if it's possible in fact um, so we uh, we draw our old segments let's make that a small O we ask for user inputs oh dear someone's coffee um, and then we, we draw the, the top one And let's clear the screen at the end. Or? No, let's... Oh, I know. Um, we have to first do this. Then this, and then that. Right? So we ask for user input first. Then we clear the screen. We write the first segment. And then look where we move to. And then write the next segment. Which in this case is the head of the war. Make sense? Let's see if that works. Let's see if my plan works here. Oops. Okay, first nothing was 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 drawn because the clear screen was not there, right? But as soon as I draw something, I have a worm where the old segment is, uh, or the old x and y values are drawn with a small o, and the new x and y values are drawn with a big o. So this is the head of our baby worm and the rest is the body of our baby worm, right? And it can't leave the... Oh, it can't leave the screen, but it can crunch if it's hitting the wall. Ah, maybe that's a feature. Okay? Good. So, now we've seen lots of things. Let's go back to the slides and see um, what we've seen so far. 